uh, librarian at Western Hill Library. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to talk to you this morning about um, uh, mainly about searching the literature, but about you know UAB libraries, resources, and services to support your work. And um, it's going to be about an hour. Um, my main objectives uh, for you for today, or um, after I talk to you this morning, uh, hopefully you'll be able to you know find books and clinical resources for your background research in the libraries. Um, you'll um, find research articles to support your work um, by doing effective searches of the biomedical literature, um, and talk about some advanced uh, searching techniques. Um, uh, I'm not go quite as much into the expert searching thing as I used to, but I'm going to teach you some of the advanced searching techniques. And um, also um, how to get full text, of course, that's really important for you both on and off campus, and um, knowing how to get help. Okay. So just stop me if you have any questions along the way. Okay. All righty, uh, speaking of getting help, um, one of the main things we want, I want you to know about are our library guides, which have uh, help on, you know, specific to particular resources or, or things you're trying to do um, uh, uh, on several different things. And that's, uh, you can get to this, um, the library guides at this um, uh, web, web address. Um, you can also go, go to the library site and get to it through our research guides link on that page. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, and that's really important. Also, one of the things I want to stress, first off, is that you want to um, start, you know, whatever you're, you're trying to research, whether it's, you know, um, a free resource like PubMed or, or Google Scholar or anything, or, or a subscription resource that we provide for you, you want to start with the library's website because that way it, um, it makes it easier for you um, uh, to get to the full text if you're off campus, for example, that'll prompt you for your Blazor ID and password. Okay, so um, just remember that. Okay, all right, so let's talk about some of the services that we have supporting um, researchers and clinicians and students and whoever else needs us. Um, First of all, um, for to get help, um, there are different ways you can get help. Um, there's this uh, little chat box um, thing uh, that kind of is kind of like a little tab to the side of our website, and you click on the little tab, and it's good, it slides out, and you can uh, chat with us, okay, at the libraries. And this is the chat hours for the library, the Lister Hill Library where I work. Um, and then uh, you can also email us. Um, there's a link for email. Um, you can um, set up, you know, um, an individual consultation with us, um, and we do those a lot. You know, we'll sit down with you and talk to you about what your research you're trying to do, um, um, try to come up with some good strategies for you, some different databases to try, things like that. So we'll we'll work with you on that, um, just one on one at your at your convenience. We also provide um, a number of, you know, regular training sessions. Um, here's some popular topics that we offer. Um, and, you know, besides searching, you know, um, we, we talk about how to use different tools like EndNote, um, how to um, uh, work around that, the NIH um, public access policy for it, where you get federal grants, you have to, you know, submit your work onto PubMed Central, think how to, how to comply with that. Um, how to use my bibliography and creating bio sketches within my NCBI. How many of you have a my NCBI account, by the way? Good. Okay. If you don't yet, I hope you will. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay. Um, and um, we can do these training sessions, you know, in person, online, um, however. Uh, we also, again, do, you know, provide, you know, one-on-one -on -one assistance. So with your particular uh, literature search, with Keeping Current, um, uh, the University Hospital Library, they provide um, this table of contents service that you can sign up for for particular journals. Um, we uh, help, help people with um, uh, bibliographic citation management programs, but, um, mainly with EndNote, but some other programs as well. And um, choosing your publication. Hello. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, finding out how many times you were cited for your Motion packets, things like that. So I'm going to kind of start at the end here to, um, because this is what people uh, ask about a lot is how to get, you know, full text. Okay, that's where people run into uh, problems sometimes trying to figure that out. 
um, again, you want to start with the, the library's website. And um, so what we have are these, uh, we have a subscription to this link resolver called Serial Solutions. And, and uh, when you're in, this is a, a slide, slide from a PubMed abstract view. And if you look at the, the PubMed citations and the abstract view, you'll see um, these uh, article, these little full text link buttons that pop up. And one's, um, there's usually one for the publisher and one for um, this article linker. And the article linker is our link resolver. So you want to click on that. And when you do, you'll get this little interim screen that you know, tells you whether or not we have that particular article. Um, and then it has some links to um, the different options for getting to the article. And you just click on those, those hypertext links and at the top, it will prompt you for a blazer ID and password, um, like this. So this little pop-up window will come up, and so you log in that way, and then you get to the full text. But this is, again, a reminder to always go through the, the library's website, all right, to do that. Weird noises here. Okay, so... <laughs> So what happens if you don't have, um, uh, if we don't have access to that particular journal? Um, in this case, you'll get a notice through this article linker that says, "Sorry, we don't have that ac that full text access." Um, and you have these other options below that you can try. So um, the first option I always try is Google Scholar. So you can just click on the article link um, title link, and it'll just kind of pop that into Google Scholar and um, see if that happens to be out there on the web somewhere. A lot, a lot of times it is. If not, um, we do have interlocutory loan service, that, uh, which is option two, and um, uh, it's free to you, um, and it's fast. Uh, it's usually only a day or two. They deliver the, the PDF article you know, you know, uh, electronically. It's, it's really quick, it's, uh, and it's easy. And um, if you click on this request link down here and under option two, it'll populate the form for you. So you don't have to go typing in all the information or anything. Okay. So, um, and you just log in with your Blazor ID and password. Okay. Other routes, again, are Google Scholar. You can, you can use that. We'll talk a little bit more about Google Scholar in a minute um, for, for searching and stuff. But um, I particularly like to use it for finding um, specific items that I'm looking for. Okay, so um, if you have a, a, an article, a particular article title you're looking for, that's that's really good for that. Okay, um, EndNote you can also set that up to um, find full text. Um, not only that's what's free, but also linked through what the library subscribes to um, on your behalf. Okay, so and the links on these slides, that, um, this link will tell you how to set up your EndNote to do that. Okay, and we can help you with that too if you need, if you need help. Now, browsing is another um, uh, app that's available that you can um, get to uh, uh, full text um, on your mobile device, and we make that available to you as well. Okay, any questions about full text? All right. Okay, so um, let's talk about, you know, um, searching the literature and finding information for your work. Uh, again, we'll start with the library website. I'm going to actually show you the website now and uh, kind of cross it here and here it is. Okay, so this is, um, this is the Lister Hill Library website. If uh, you go to, um, when you go to the, the library.uab.edu, that, that's the main, the main uh, library's um, page. And um, um, within the, the library system, the UAB library system, there, um, not besides the Lister Hill Library, the health sciences, there's also Stern Library, which is the general academic library on campus. Um, and then there are some special collections, the historical, well, Finley uh, Historical Library, um, the Museum of the Health Sciences, the, um, the Hospital Library, and there's also one in uh, the archives, digital collections, things like that. And some, and we have a lot of our collections now, our old print collections in uh, uh, remote storage now, too. So um, just be aware of that. 
But this is, okay, but in any case, <laughs> we, we now have the ability um, to, we used to have these two separate worlds with the, um, the academic library and the Lister Hill Library with the health sciences. Um, so you had to search the catalogs of each one separately. Now we have this um, uh, combined catalog, and uh, that's in this central architecture on the, on the website, okay? Oh, and by the way, here's the, um, the ASCA librarian tab down here toward the, the left. You're, wait, you're right, on <laughs> my left. And uh, if you click on that, it pops out, and there's your, your chat box. And you could, um, yeah, accept it. Oh. No, I'm not gonna ask a question right now. But yeah, you could, you could just like pop in your question there. Okay, but let me show you the, um, how to use the, the catalog real quick. Um, so if you, what it is, it's a kind of a federated search engine. So it searches, you know, both catalogs and it also searches through a lot of the databases and, and Google and all this other stuff. So if you search everything, you're going to be kind of buried, <laughs> you know, I can tell you. So uh, what I like to do is use the advanced, you know, search. I can get it to come up. Um, and so you, you get this little um, search box here. And in the search scope, I, you know, I changed that to what specifically I'm looking for. So if you wanted to look up just, you know, eBooks, all right, you can change it to that. And in the fields, um, I'd like to change it to a particular thing that I'm looking for. It's like, like maybe a title. Say I'm looking for geriatrics, a geriatrics text online. So I can just search that. I can go in the publication date uh, limit over, over to the right over there. And I can change it, say I just want the last you know, five years or so, and search it. And instead of getting you know, thousands of results from you know, <laughs> all over the place, I'm just going to get, I, in this case, I got seven results. And they're all ebooks, um, should be within the last five years. And you click on that, and you have the online access, and it pulls up the full text. OK? All right. So we're, we're still getting used to a lot of this new catalog stuff ourselves, so bear with us. <laughs> but, uh, yes, ma'am? Yeah, great question. Mm -hmm. How many um, people can access ebooks at a time? There's, there's, it's different for different resources. So we have license agreements for these things. And, so, and um, yeah, some of them are set at specific numbers, you know, and others, you know, there's, you know, sky's the limit. So it just depends, unfortunately. All right, thank you. Yeah. But, and some of them are easier to load and, and read to, and you know, than others. So it's just it just depends on the vendor. But you know, if you ever have any complaints about anything, just let us know because that's how we know you know how to set our parameters okay. <laughs> correctly. Okay. And in fact, let's see. On here, if you want to um, communicate with us, you know, again that help um, tab right here. Um, this is um, where you would go to, you know, contact us. You can, um, uh, you know, you can you can text us. <laughs> you can set up an appointment. You can um, give us some suggestions over here on the left. Report a problem, all kinds of stuff. Okay. All right. Okay. So. Back. All right. So that's how to get to, you know, books, and um, um, also you can look to see if we have a particular journal, things like that, um, different databases and stuff. This is, um, if you scroll down a little bit, um, you can also reserve a study room. We have, since we re uh, renovated our space at Lister Hill Library, we have a number of uh, additional study rooms, and um, including individual study rooms now, so that if you need to, um, you know, just have a space to study. You can reserve it here. Um, this is the interlibrary loan where you can request, you know, um, resources that we don't have. The databases link. Um, this is with the research guides where um, Socrates, uh, what is it? <laughs> Hippocrates is. Um, and uh, these are the guides that um, are available for particular um, resources and services. All right. Okay. Let me get back to my slideshow. Okay. Um, all right. And 
I didn't show you the databases page, but anyway, the, um, the databases page you can also, um, I'll show you a little bit, you can um, search by um, a particular resource, you can um, limit to particular um, subject areas, vendors, um, types of resources you're looking for. So for example, if you're looking for like test instruments, you can look for a particular, uh, you know, a collection of databases that, that sort of have uh, test instruments, stuff like that. Okay, so um, so that's uh, that's our A to Z, and you can also do the A to Z link um, to the resources. Okay, so but most most of the time, I usually start in any kind of health sciences uh, literature search. Um, I start with PubMed. Um, how many of you are pretty experienced using PubMed? Yeah, I hope that a lot of you are. Um, so. Um, so we're going to talk a lot about PubMed today, um, but a lot of people, you know, you know, a lot of people do, you know, start with, you know, Google or Google Scholar. You know, it's just, you know, we all like Google. Um, so how many of you use Google? <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay. So um, what I like to do, when, what I'd like to do is, is show you some of the differences. I was talking about. I like to use Google Scholar to look for particular items for that kind of thing or for you know just kind of like a background fact or something like that you know I use Google um, for subject searching it's not really that great it's a blunt instrument and um, I'll show you an example why I say that okay so I'm not sure why this is um, we have more than uh, PubMed um, pulled out from our databases but for some reason it's not showing up so um, just to show you, let's go to our databases page, and I'm going to Google Scholar. There it is. Okay. All right, so this is the Google Scholar page. All right, say um, I, recently I got a, a question um, from a clinician who wanted me to help them find um, uh, evidence for, um, uh, let's see if I can pronounce this correctly, endosputum versus gastric aspirate um, in the accurate diagnosis of pediatric TB. So, so if I go to Google Scholar and I just use my Tarzan speech um, keywords here, so I go to do, um, spell it right, induced sputum gastric aspirate pediatric tuberculosis and I enter I get 11,600 results okay um, I can go and you know I can say you know just limit it by you know date or you know just to get down a little bit so down down to 654 if I just go back a couple of years but um, my point is, you're, you know, you can you can do some things to tweak it, but you're still going to have a whole bunch of stuff. And one reason I like to use um, uh, PubMed is um, um, for this type of, you know, um, medical library literature search is that um, you get more targeted results. So, you know, I've been a librarian for like 30 years now, um, and obviously things have, have changed a lot in, in the field since I've been here. But um, whereas before, you know, I might have had, you know, to help people actually find any information on something. Now we're just kind of buried in it. So what our our job now is is a lot of it is helping people manage this, you know, drinking from a fire hose kind of um, phenomenon. So so we help you target your results. So um, and part of that is choosing the right resource to start with. And PubMed is a good resource for this. So if I did the exact same thing and put the exact same keywords into this basic search screen here and searched it, instead of you know 11,600, I got 27. Okay, and um, and you can check in the um, the search details box over to the, the right there and click on see more and it tells you what it's doing in the background here. It's taking your search. And, and um, finding the different concepts within it and searching the mesh um, controlled vocabulary terms and the keywords to, um, 
to come up with the correct um, search strategy for you. So you really can use, you know, you don't have to do a lot of the advanced um, techniques on your own. You know, you can just start with this. And that's what it's done. It's taken my, my, um, my keywords and, and found a pretty good set there. Okay. There are things we can do to, to, to target it further, but this is a, 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 not a bad search. Okay. So does that make sense? Okay. So PubMed is the um, gold standard biomedical database. It's got 25 or more, or more millions of citations. Um, and besides those that are fully indexed by the um, uh, indexers at the National Library of Medicine, um, using this uh, MeSH controlled vocabulary uh, subject headings, um, it also has these in-process citations. You know, thousands of those that are um, automatically added by the publishers with, that have the rights to do that, have been allowed to do that by the National Library of Medicine. And so, um, so this, can, this is kind of important in the, the kind of searching that you do because this is why you want to do probably both mesh searching and keyword searching to get at both those that are fully indexed as well as those that haven't been indexed yet because those in-process citations are really new. Uh, a lot of times they're, they're um, a lot of times they're not even you know, out in print or whatever. Um, and then um, uh, and then it has you know it goes back all the way back to 1946 and earlier. And it's free to everybody. Provide in um, it's set up to link to the full text articles. So here's a PubMed record, a full um, um, abstract view, and. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but at the bottom we've circled where the bottom of the record has a link to the mesh terms, and if we um, click on that, it pulls those up, and you can see there, there are several of them. And what mesh terms are, what controlled vocabulary terms are, um, they're, um, you know, there are different ways that, that authors may kind of describe the same thing, okay? So, um, so when they're submitting their articles and, and um, to the journals and the, the journals say give me your keywords or whatever to describe this they may describe it different ways um, but what the control vocabulary does is um, the indexers decide well we're gonna we're gonna call this thing you know this by this word and collect everything all the articles um, that are uh, that are describing this maybe in different ways and call it and, and put it under that so Okay, and so it's a more efficient way sometimes of doing a search. However, again, since some of those, those in-process citations are there too, you have to also do some creative keywords as well. So um, in terms of, you know, just setting up your PubMed search, you want to, I'll talk about this in a minute, but we'll, so you want to start with an answerable question, and we'll talk about that in a minute. You want to look at the details box that would, I just did that with the induced sputum um, search. Uh, to check to see if they're, um, if you do, you know, they're translating your search in a way that's um, that's reasonable. Um, do you want to consider, you know, using the mesh headings and subheadings to help you focus your search results? Um, and you can use this advanced search builder. I'm going to show you that um, uh, to combine search strings. Okay. Um, link to the full text with article linker button and um, these are kind of the wildcard symbols that PubMed uses and, and most other databases use is an asterisk that you can use at the end of root words for like, um, uh, for like diabetes. You could end it at the T with an asterisk and you could get diabetes, diabetic, whatever. Okay. Um, and then put quotation marks around phrases to force it to look for a phrase and just instead of just those words, you know, anywhere in the record. And remember, PubMed isn't the be-all, end-all. You know, there are other resources. And if we have time, I'll go into those other resources as well. And then remember to ask your librarian for help. Okay. Let's talk about question formation. This is kind of the building blocks of your, your search. All right. Uh, so um, a lot of people use the PICO format to kind of uh, formulate your, your question. Um, and what it really does is really just help you uh, separate your search into its um, basic concepts and, and set up your search strategy. So 
um, for and, and so for PICO, um, that P stands for population or the problem. The um, I stands for the intervention or exposure. Uh, C is for comparison, um, uh, and the O is for outcomes. So um, in my uh, induced sputum versus uh, gastric aspirate um, diagnosis for pediatric TB, what would be my population or problem? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And what would be the intervention? Yeah. Uh -huh. And the comparison would be the gastric, you know, aspirin. Um, and the outcome would be an accurate diagnosis, right? So that's what we're looking for. And there's some other examples of review questions. I'm, I'm a, I have a public health background, so a lot of these are public health focused. But um, so if we took uh, just one of these um, example questions um, and uh, said, like, one Somebody might come to me and say, okay, I'm, I'm looking for um, uh, research um, uh, for evidence of effectiveness of condoms in preventing HIV. Well, you know, I might say, well, how might you kind of target that a little bit better to make, to get your results, you know, to do an answer, have an answerable question with, with good um, uh, targeted results. You might target the population a little bit. In men who have sex with men, does con that would be the uh, more targeted population, does condom use re reduce the risk of HIV transmission? Okay, so it's a little way of, different way of asking it and setting it up to get more targeted results. Okay, and again, it's just to prevent you from getting buried, <laughs> you know, and, and having to go through a lot of stuff that you don't really have time to, okay? All right, so let's do a real quick demo here. There we are. Okay, we're back here at PubMed. Okay. Um, all right, so let's say um, another, uh, another type of search we might want to do is um, um, in, uh, we might want to see what's the, um, what's the evidence in the literature for um, the effectiveness of um, physical activity interventions in managing non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in children. Okay, so again, what's my, what's my population? Children. Yeah. yeah, children with a, a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And um, what's the intervention? Exercise, yeah. And um, uh, I don't really have a comparison, maybe no exercise or different, something else. Um, and the outcome would be, you know, managing the, the disease well. So, um, again, I can go in here and put in, see. actually, I'm going to do this a little uh, differently. I'm going to just put in, um, put in one of my concepts, not a colic fatty deliver disease. And, and you can see where it, it kind of makes suggestions for you. So I can just click on that and it pops it in. And it's searching and I've got lots and lots of stuff. Okay, so, um, so okay, if I, if I checked my, my search details, it would tell me, um, it searched for the MESH term for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease as well as the individual keywords and um, that phrase in quotation marks, okay? All right, so um, we also want uh, physical activity. So let's try activity. Just go like that. That's my second concept. All right, got a lot of that. All right, um, so so I've got you know I've done a couple of searches here. If I click on this advanced link at the top, here's the advanced search builder, and I use this an awful lot. So if you scroll down to the history, you can see it's got um, all the the searches I've already done, um, and I could go ahead and uh, where it says add to the builder that column there. 
beside the search strings, I could click on add. Maybe, did I? Oh, oops, I did it too many times. <laughs> I don't want to do it that much. Okay. And then add to the history instead of searching. And instead of, you know, I'm down to now, I'm down to 944. I still have to add in my, my, um, my child, children population, right? Um, and there are different ways to do that. Um, now, let me look at my results here. If I click on the items found um, part where it says 944 results and click on that, it'll pull up those, those results. And I want to show you something here. I know it's boring watching people <laughs> do searching. I'm sorry. I'm trying to make this go fast. Okay. Okay. So, um, so they have these uh, filters over on the left here, and um, you can you can add these filters. And one of those, there's a show additional filters down here, and one of those is age groups. And I could go ahead and just you know pop in and show that and select the different age groups that I want, okay? However, remember um, uh, when I was talking about using, uh, doing mesh ser searching and keyword searching, um, remember if you just do um, a, a mesh term search, you're not gonna find those in-process citations that haven't been assigned mesh terms, okay? Likewise, if you use some of these filters over here, the day range, it doesn't matter, but things like the age groups and things like that, if I assign those filters there, um, it's going to knock out my in-process citations. Those are really newer citations, and I don't want to do that. Yes, ma'am? Uh, should my search be different if I'm doing a systematic review or some other type of review? And then is there a way to know that my search is good and strong? Because I remember one time I got this comment that my search is weak, yeah. even though me, with uh, the help of an uh, expert librarian, would try to do you know, the right thing. Yeah, so yeah. Is, there, is there like a way to know that what I'm doing is actually bad? Well, yeah, there, um, there are different um, expert techniques you can, you can put in there. and. And what we usually do, you know, we have a systematic review service at Lister Hill, and we will work with, with clients, even though, you know, you know, a lot of these searches are really complicated and stuff. What we'll do is uh, kind of a, a peer review of each other's uh, searches within the, the department, the, um, the reference department, so that, um, so that they may catch some terms that we didn't think of, you know, because nobody, you know, nobody's perfect, <laughs> you know, so you can miss things um, if you're just, you know, um, if you're just depending on your own ability to capture everything. And, and for a systematic review, they want you to be comprehensive. And then one more question, I don't mm -hmm. want to say too much, but um, how many studies do we have to have to do a meta-analysis? I'm just, I'm just, uh, I just found an article here with what you just said we should do, and I found in a very well-respected article in my field, mm -hmm. uh, a meta-analysis of my topic that I'm about to do with two articles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's published in mean, the journal or stuff, actually. The journal. I can't give you a hard and fast number, but yeah, that, that seems kind of low to me. I don't, I don't know. But, um, so is there like a number you can do systematically if you had 10 articles in the very end, or a meta analysis if you had 10 articles? Or... Yeah, um, with, with meta analysis, it's not just the number, it's also the heterogeneity of the. the different types of, you know, studies that are done and stuff. So you have to make sure that they're similar enough and you're not doing apples and oranges and stuff like that. So, you know, I hesitate to give you a hard and fast number or anything like that. We, you know, we just have to kind of look into the, the field and, and, you know, what, yeah, it would, it would depend. But I would think, you know, two, two things would maybe be a little bit low. Yeah. But anyway. Okay, so we're talking about children, adding children in. Um, so if we can't do the, the filters, what do we do? Um, so there's, let's see. <laughs> Tell me I didn't lose everything. No. Okay. So uh, just mm -hmm. to clarify, the way you set up your search, mm -hmm. it will include all those current articles that haven't 
had mesh tone the same? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in fact, if you if you look at these that I've already pulled up, the ones that toward the top, you'll see they don't they don't have a link to mesh terms on okay. them. Those are those are have not those are in process citations. How? Because I thought this was the search was based on those two phrases, right? You mm -hmm. put in non-alcoholic fatty liver mm -hmm. disease and physical Just, yeah. yeah. But it's not searching on mesh. Yes, it is. It's including both. So it's doing the, you remember when we looked at the search details? Okay. Okay, so it, it looked at those, uh, it translated those um, keywords that I put in and, and looked at the mesh terms and then or that with oh, keywords. keywords. So as long as, the, as long as those words appear in the yes. title of yeah, the Yeah, somewhere in the record. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So if you wanted pediatric or child, mm -hmm. you would just add that to your keywords, pediatric or child. I could. Mm -hmm. Sure could. In fact, that's what I'm going to show you how to do it. There's actually in, we were talking about the guides earlier. Okay, so um, this, I'm going back to my Lister Hill Library homepage, and where this PubMed by LHL um, link, there's also a PubMed guide underneath that, okay? So if I click on that, one of the things on this, in this guide, it tells you all about searching PubMed and stuff like that. Um, and how to do effective searches. The last tab is called hedges, and what hedges are, these are like these preformed search strings for, for PubMed um, that are, you know, meant to address these kind of problems within using PubMed. So, um, so I can go through here, and these have all been kind of validated in different things. A lot of them were Cochrane uh, validated search strings. So I can go through and look, okay, I'm looking, if I'm looking for just RCTs, I can, I can, there's a string for that, for guidelines. Just kind of scroll down here, and one of those is age groups. And here's one from Cochrane on searching for children. And so what I do is I go through this, this guide, and I just copy this, you know, select the whole string, and it's a long one. You know, they thought of everything. <laughs> so they thought of all the different keywords they're supposed to use. And I copy that, and I go back to my um, search in PubMed and just kind of paste that in. Oh, wow. Okay. And search it. This way it gets around that, that filter bubble kind of thing. And right. so that's saying or, where the other one said and. Yeah. Uh -huh. right? No, this is, this is oring together all the different keywords okay. for, for children. Okay, and it's, it's you know it does has um, kind of a wild card li limit on. Yeah, so but I mean that first article is not part of your. I mean no. that article has nothing to do with what you're looking no, for. No, because I've done a whole new search here. So what I have to do is go back into the advanced search builder. Remember, I've still got all my search strings down here that I've already done. Uh, Non-alcoholic fatty liver oh, disease, physical nice activity, ad. and okay. then now I'm going to add it. All right, so. So I've had um, I've got this last one that that was had both the yeah. non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and physical activity with number four, and I click on add that, and then I add that search string for children. So I've got that, and you now I can search it. And before I had 944, um, should have a few less than that. You know. So there's no way to get to that field. Right away, right? You have to first put it in your top, and then yeah, pretty much. Then. You okay. have to search it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now, now I'm down to 277. Okay. Now, um, if I really wanted to get it, just you know, the uh, evidence-based practice uh, literature and stuff, uh, like clinical trials and systematic reviews and stuff like that, there's a way I can do that by using the clinical queries, and this is an important tool for you to be aware of in PubMed. So if I go back to my advanced search builder, okay, see in my history, I've got all these search string numbers over to the far left here. And I take my last, my last search string number is number six that had everything together, all right? Um, so if I go back, that's, that's number six. If I go back to PubMed Home, and look at this, there's under PubMed Tools right in the middle, there's clinical queries. And this is a really important tool for you to remember. So I've got that number six from my history. All I have to do is put in my pound six, that search number right there, and search it. 
And now I can say, okay, if I look at the uh, clinical study uh, category, there are 80 in that list. And there are 13 systematic reviews that I can look at. That is really cool. It is. It's, it's really handy. It's Sorry, really handy to have. Just go through that again. How did you get to that page? So, um, let's see. Oh, sorry. Go back home. You can get back to PubMed on the bottom of the screen here, too. So I click on PubMed under PubMed Tools, right down here in this this column, this middle column, is clinical queries. Okay. And you just put in whatever uh, search string you wanted to, oops, not, not five, six, to do. You could also, you know, place in a whole long search string, uh, string there if you wanted to. And then if I wanted just to see those systematic reviews, I could go down to the bottom where it says see all thir thir 13 of these sort of systematic reviews and it will pull that up. Okay. So there are my, my systematic reviews on this um, effectiveness of physical activity for um, uh, addressing non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in children. All right. Okay. Um, you'll notice when I'm um, sorry. If you, um, if you wanted to restrict mm -hmm. your search to the stuff that's just been published in the last, say, five years, yes. Well, it bump. So if you went and used that left-hand column, would it bump out? the most recent article no. that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So it'll still... The, the publication it. date's fine. That, okay. that filter is fine. Okay. The, um, uh, the others you have to be careful about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's just a PubMed quirk. You know. uh, there are other databases like Embase and, and um, other resources you might want to use. They don't, they don't have this problem with, uh, with the filters, but PubMed does. So... Um, so in, in um, using, also one thing I want to talk about before we get off of PubMed, um, you'll notice when in the results here, I've got, I've got my, I'm, I'm signed in to my NCBI, and I've got my preferences set up to where it automatically, you'll see, automatically displays the abstract view, it highlights or bolds the, the, um, the terms that um, I incorporated in my search. Um, so you can set up your preferences that way. And um, if you don't have a MindCPI account, I'd really encourage you to, to set one up. It's, it's, um, it's really handy. Not only for doing this kind of thing, for setting up your preferences, and you can also save ser your searches. So if I want to come back and do this later, I can do this create an alert at the top here. And it would... Um, just go ahead and show you how that works. So I'd, I'd create an alert. I could name it something, whatever I wanted to. It would save my search string. I could ask it to email me when I get updates on this, you know, if there are new systematic reviews coming out on this topic, um, all kinds of things. So um, I could, I could uh, set up a search and um, go back to it and run it again when I need to. I can also... Um, Use my NCBI to, uh, um, you know, if I want to so I can save some, some of my citations, I can click in these little box, check boxes to mark specific things, and under the send to box at the uh, pull down menu at the top, I can, um, uh, if, if in addition to saving it to, you know, citation manager or uh, save it as a file or email it to myself or whatever, I can also add it to um, my collections, and this is um, this is in uh, a my NCBI um, in your own personal collection of um, different different uh, sets you're trying to save. So I can create a new collection. I can add it to different ones I've already created. You can see I already have several. Okay. So do you create your My NCBI through the PubMed platform? Mm -hmm, you can. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you can also, you know, um, you don't have to sign up for a new My NCBI account. You can also, um, uh, you can also sign up. You can also uh, sign in using your ERA Commons account. So that way, it actually links to your your uh, ERA Commons account as well, which kind of helps you keep up with the. Um, 
your uh, NIH compliance in, in terms of um, whether your articles need to be added to PubMed Central and stuff like that. So you can see I've got in my NCBI, I've got you know several saved searches that I've done over here um, that I can come back and rerun if I need to. Um, there's also this my bibliography um, where you can save your your um, articles, your publications, um, and uh, you can link to this from your uh, biosketch for your grants so that um, have, you have a full list. You know, since they limit the number of um, publications you can add to your biosketch now, you can, you can link to this to provide to um, the uh, reviewers. Okay. You can also create your biosketches in using SciNCB, which is, um, and I have, you can see I have several here that just, you know, I, use, I teach a class, you know, for create, using SciNCB, but, but you can, um, you can create different uh, biosketches for different grant um, proposals you're writing. Okay, it makes it really easy, and it's um, um, formatted to uh, to the, uh, the federal funder specifications. So it's it's a really handy thing to have. Okay. Okay. Throw a lot at you, um, PubMed there. Any questions? So would you recommend setting this up through your ERA Commons? Is that it, the best that would be good, yeah. Sure. Yeah, okay. yeah. So if I, um, let me just sign out here. So you, okay, so if you, this is where you sign in, uh, you know, to, through, um, you can go through NCBI, you can go through PubMed, there are different ways you can get to it. But, uh, so if you log in, it, it allows you to log in different ways. Um, so if you could, you have an ERA Commons account, you can just sign in with that. Okay. Okay. But this will, you know, this is something you can, you know, whether you're affiliated with UAB or not, you can take with you forever. All right. Okay. I'm getting close to the end of my time here. Um, so... This is another slide that talks about that. There, we have in our guide that also talks about um, uh, making the most. We have a guide called "Making the Most of NCBI," and um, it tells you about all this kind of resources you can use um, as well. So don't forget about you know, um, you know, asking us for help. Um, um, you know, go, using our guides, uh, chat with us, you know, set up consultation with us. Um, I have my cards here if anybody wants to take them. You know, you can call me directly. Um, sorry. And um, oh, I have some other slides that are included in my thing that I'm probably going to have time to get through. But, but generally, you take the same kind of approach in other database searches as you do with PubMed. Um, you know, like Embase has its own controlled vocabulary. Um, that's different from Nash, uh, so it's called mTree, but but it also has kind of a quick search thing that that will translate the search for you, just like the way I did with um, PubMed using the basic search. So you can still put in your keywords, and it'll it'll try to translate it for you using both the controlled vocabulary and keyword searching. So, um, but when you're when you're doing systematic reviews and stuff like that, you you do want to involve a librarian with that. We can we can we really do a lot of those. We sit down with you and, and help you, you know, set your search strategy up. And um, a lot of times we'll do the searches for you, you know, if you want us to do that. So, um, you know, be sure to uh, keep us posted when you're trying to do stuff like that. And, and be aware that systematic reviews take a long time to get all the way through. A lot of people get bogged down once they realize how many, you know, references they're going to have to go through and, and screen and stuff. Yes, ma'am. What is a good way to know that uh, the topic is actually a good topic for systematic review so you can register it in, in Postgres, for example? Um, the, um, is there like a way to see what is out there very quickly? Yeah, you can. Uh, I would do kind of like a preliminary kind of scoping search to see, you know, um, how many, if there's been a systematic review on this topic yet. Um, another thing, uh, you know, recently, and if it needs updating and things like that. Um, another thing you want to think about as far as systematic reviews is um, you, you really want to um, 
be careful about your, your again, asking an answerable question with a systematic review because if, you're, if you ask one that's too broad, it's just going to be overwhelming. You, nobody can get through it. Um, if you if you ask a question that's too excuse me too narrow, um, you know it's it's not really use that useful, <laughs> you know. So you really have to think carefully about the question you're asking, and also um, the the state of the field. I mean, you probably know the field better than I would. So so um, is the is the particular is the particular area of research as it um, is it really new? Has it matured enough for there to be enough literature on this topic to even merit a systematic review at this point? Or is it still at the stage where you're building up studies to support a review? That kind of thing. So there are different questions you need to ask. Um, there, we do have a guide on, on systematic reviews, and actually it has some of these questions for you. Um, we'll get back to that. Um, Yeah. Okay, um, so it kind of gives you an introduction and it talks about, you know, the, the timeline and things like that and things you need to think about and um, talks about is there already a systematic review on your topic, things you need to consider, we have a Word document um, and, you know, again, there's a consultation form on here you can set up and talk to us, you know, one-on-one. -on -one about that before you get started. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things to consider for you. Well, thank you for your attention. I enjoyed it this morning. Thanks.